This is yeah. uh, so. This the idea of the, this is to provide DDoS protection. The reason I'm I'm very aware of this is our friend Steve Gibson. Uh, it was DDoSed off and on for days, bringing yeah. his site down. And the problem is that the features of his site, like Shields Up, could not be used in a DDoS protected environment. Yeah. Uh, oh. So how yeah. does Google exactly do this? It basically caches the site on on Google servers, and then Google servers are so gigantic that they, they can't can, be they, they can't, can't be, be destroyed by a ddos yeah. attack and what's interesting about this to me but the they're most doing this for free for people for free and nice. it's who's doing it jigsaw now i thought jigsaw was a think tank i thought they were sitting around smoking opium and stuff and just coming up with grand ideas but this is actually a service that is being provided by jigsaw so i think that's really interesting so they're going to actually be doing things not just this works roughly the same as um Commercial um, DDoS protection sites like, and I'm trying to remember John Graham Cum Cummings' uh, site uh, company, uh, Cloudflare, by a yeah. reverse proxy. So, um, in exactly right, it goes through Google. The problem is that Steve raised with all of these sites is that they would own, they have to own the certificate, yeah. they have to own the domain name, and that he cannot then oh. provide outbound services like Shields Up. But it's fine for a news site, and what this yeah. is in it intended to do is protect news sites against being brought down as a form of, you know, censorship. Yeah, well, it's even better than just protecting news sites from censorship, and in their announcement, they talked about a specific Iranian news website that was brought down by the Iranian government, most likely, to prevent them from reporting on shenanigans in their election, etc. But what's interesting about this is that they, they're neutral in terms of are you left and right or whatever politics— but they're not neutral in terms of what kind of news site it is. So if it's a government-owned website like China TV or, you know, state state uh, media, they will not protect those sites. So now we're oh, entering, that's interesting. Yeah, right. That so now we're entering a world where government sites can be DDoSed. Well, and presumably the Chinese government South has Korea. equal resources. <laughs> but uh, but does the North Korean? Does the, Maybe not North exactly. Korea. South, South Korea They're was the South Korea, I would argue, would need protection from North Korea. Yeah. Maybe. Yep. Maybe. I mean, it, to, to bring down a modern uh, site, you need a lot of bandwidth. Uh, by the way, uh, we, we talked a lot about this on uh, Security Now on Tuesday. I encourage you to listen to that episode. But... DDoS attacks could easily be mitigated if ISPs would simply block packets coming out of their networks that don't have IP addresses within their IP range. In other words, oh. spoofed IP addresses. Mm -hmm. um, that's how you have to do this. You have to, because otherwise, if you, you can't, if you're a bad guy and you're trying to bring a site down, you can't use your IP address. They right. just block those IP addresses. So right. they use raw sockets and other techniques to spoof the IP addresses, just to make up IP addresses, um, so that you can't block any given IP address. It has to come from many. You can do that with a botnet as well. But if in general ISPs just simply, it would not in any way impinge on their effectiveness, simply said, look, that uh, that address is not from our network. Why are you pretending to be that address? We're going we're gonna to drop mm -hmm. that packet. None of this would happen. Yeah. And I'm not Are sure. Are there why any, I, any implications at all to that happening? Not that I know of. Uh, VPNs or uh, no? Be, well, it would it would it would mean that you would be able to be anonymous on a network, but you could still go out of the network using Tor and be anonymous. It seems to me like this is a very simple thing, and I think Steve Gibson agrees because uh, you know every internet service provider. Every connection to the internet is 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 provided with a range of IP addresses that they own that they're mm -hmm. legal addresses. Your address, when you use Cox or Comcast mm -hmm. or Time Warner, is within that range of addresses. But if suddenly out of your computer, from... your computer is coming some other address, that's bad behavior. And no, no, I can't think of. But Leo, any... correct me if I'm wrong here. This is DDoS attacks are not coming from Comcast; they're coming from Russia. What, well, that's the problem. I bet you, I don't so know, but I would suspect that would Comcast is probably doing the right thing. Although for years, they didn't block port 25. They didn't block, block spam, outbound spam. Um, my, my, But you're right. I mean, it's it's got to be all ISPs. It can't just be a yeah, few. Yeah, that's the issue. And you uh, know there's going to be evil ISPs somewhere in the world run by governments in some cases. Yeah, I, you know, I don't think the guy who's bringing GRC.com down is coming out of Russia. Uh, he's got botnets perhaps in Russia, but he's got I botnets said, right. all over. He's put it all over. He yeah. certainly would mitigate it considerably if the 
not you know the top 20 ISPs did this because you need bandwidth. He's he's Steve was hit with 13 gigabits per second. Wow, that's how you bring somebody down. And uh, and so if that if Jesus. even that was cut in half. A botnet's the same thing, because a botnet, if if you get the, I mean, yeah, if you had a botnet of 100,000 bots using their real address, it'd be hard to shut that down. So in that case, yeah. 